and this afternoon a 31st will be written. Today from the Connecticut Tennis Center in New Haven, Connecticut, it's the final of the 1998 Pilot Pen International. The number four seed, Steffi Graf, meets the number two seed, Yana Nevada. Hello, everyone. I'm Bob Picozzi, along with Cindy Schmerler. So glad you could join us for our continuing coverage of the Corel WTA Tour. So much of the talk in women's tennis this year has concentrated on the teenagers, Hingis, Williams, Kornikova. Yet, Cindy, here we are at the end of a week, and who do we have in the finals? Two of the, uh, shall we say, more mature players on the tour. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Two players who are not far away from the big 3-0. What a wonderful experience for Steffi Groff to be back in a final for the first time since coming back from that extended knee injury surgery. She said last night, you know what? I am thrilled to be here. And she ought to be thrilled with the way she played last night over Lindsay Davenport, a nearly two-hour match, winning in straight sets, tie break in the second set. And as you mentioned, Cindy, uh, she has a chance to win. She's won 103 tournaments, but she hasn't won one, largely because of injuries, in 15 months. Well, interestingly, Bob, last night, Steffi Groff said she didn't play the best that she's played since she's come back. She said, I got very nervous, very tight. No question. She served for the match twice. She was up a set at 5-2. She served for it at 5-2 and 5-4. And she said, she didn't say, I choked. She said, I got tight, I got nervous. She's done that a lot since she's come back. There's much more at stake for Steffi Groff now somebody asked her what keeps you here and she said oh i'm so sick of that question i'm here because of the way i feel right now and reaching a final for her is a monumental experience yana Novotna, on the other hand didn't play well last night against julie alar de Cougy. and yet here she was man managed to come through in straight sets this sets up this tremendous tremendous rivalry as you say extending back over a decade Yana has already won four tournaments this year, but this has been the breakthrough year because it was the year she finally won her first Grand Slam singles title. Well, obviously, that tremendously emotional win. You look at that bio of Yana Novotna. No matter what happens in this match today, she will go back up to number two in the world. She will supplant Lindsay Davenport because Davenport needed to win here to keep that number two ranking. And yet, that mem the memory for Yana Novotna, that Wimbledon championship, erasing of all things that infamous match against none other than her opponent today, Steffi Groff, at the 1993 Wimbledon final. Yana, $9.6 million, having a chance to pick up another $79,000 with a win today here at the Connecticut Tennis Center on the campus of Yale University. This is the first year that the Pilot Pen International Women's Tournament has been played at this location. And 82 degrees, humidity 65%. It's hot and humid. But the good news is, I guess, knock on wood, we don't have to worry about uh, Hurricane Bonnie anymore. No, no no chance of rain today. And yet, Bob, they've been playing the matches at this tournament all week, late in the afternoon and into the evening hours. So this is a slightly new experience for these players. And yet, it's exactly what they need because beginning tomorrow, just about an hour and a half down the road, Flushing Meadows in the U.S. Open, these conditions mirror perfectly exactly what they're going to experience at the U.S. Open. Deco Turf 2 is the surface here and is also the surface at the United States Tennis Center at Flushing Meadows. We mentioned this is the first year of this event at this location. This is actually the old U.S. Hardcore Championships, which go back to 1948. Steffi Graf, because she's seated number four, had an opening round bye, then defeated Henrietta Nagyova in straight sets in round number two. Then it was on to the quarterfinals where she took care of an old nemesis, Amanda Kutzer, and beat her in style 6-3, 6 love two nights ago. And then the dramatic win over Davenport yesterday, 6-3, 7-6, when Steffi twice served for the match and was unable to finish it off. Subsequently had to hold serve to force a tie break and then overcame a love five deficit in the tie break to win the set and the match. So that's how Steffi has reached the final here in New Haven, her first final of the year. Well, she actually said last night that when she was down 5-0 in that tie break, she thought, I'm already thinking about going to the locker room, changing my shirt before the third set. She had it all in her mind that she was going to three and yet she managed to come back. She said that loosened her up a little bit. This is how Yana Devotna has reached the final, opening round by, defeated wildcard entry Chanda Rubin in straight sets in round number two. The quarterfinals, a straight set winner over Emily Marismo, and in the semifinals last night, defeated Julie Allard de Cougy, 6-4, 6-4, and Novotna is in a final for the seventh time in 1998. 
in her first six appearances in a final, a four-time winner and a two-time runner-up. Well, I was actually surprised at the way Nevada played Alard de Pugy last night. She stayed back. She wasn't serving in volley. She looked very lethargic to me. She didn't look like the Yana Novotna One minute. who will have to play at her best to beat Steffi Groff. And Groff expects Nevada to be in at the net every opportunity, and she's going to have to be tremendous on those passing shots. Against Davenport, she was unreal when Davenport came into the net. Novotna will turn 30 years old in October, on October 2nd. The chair umpire today, Ann Lucere Ulrich. Steffi Graf celebrated her 29th birthday on June 14th of this year, and somehow I have a feeling Cindy was a, a happier 29th than it was a 28th, because a year ago, four days before her 28th birthday, she underwent the surgery on her knee to repair that patellar tendon, which kept her out for the remainder of last year and a good chunk of this year. It was a terrible time for Steffi Graf. You know, she's been beset by injuries throughout her career. She's had knee problems. She's had back problems. She's a fairly dark personality to begin with, so it, it really did a number on her head. And every time she thought she could come back and she started practicing, something else would happen, her calf muscle or some niggling little injury. And she several times got to the point where she was just moments away from saying, that's it, I retire, I can't do it. But you'll never meet somebody with more perseverance ability than Steffi Groff, more fight in her, and just lay a challenge out in front of her, and she is going to lap it up, and that's exactly what she did, and has really willed her body back into shape. You know, it, it, it sounds almost silly to suggest that someone with uh, Steffi's accomplishments would be wondering about her confidence, and yet it's perfectly understandable when she's been out so long. And, and you know, the fact of the matter is, at age 29, yeah. she is old for a tennis player. No question about it, and I think, although she probably won't admit it, she said she came in here looking for two things, confidence and consistency. And finally, by last night, we thought she was there with consistency, up to 6 3 five, two. Then she fell back. It'll be interesting to see if she can sustain that high level today. Among those 103, Career titles for Steffi Graf, 21 Grand Slam singles titles. The record is 24, held by That's Margaret that, uh, Court. And we will begin with Steffi serving. Sarah Ulrich know that she doesn't agree and better not happen again. Cindy Steffi had a terrible time holding serve, but it was overshadowed by the fact that Lindsay Davenport had even more difficulty, but Lindsay broke serve six times in the two sets. Well, Lindsay said her wrist was bothering her. She was tended to by the trainer and it was troublesome on the serve. like a teenager. She's just so excited. When they went up to pose for pictures at the net beforehand, she hasn't been in this position in, in more than a year and a half. For her, there's this sort of youthful jubilance. It's nice to see. Oh, my goodness. In 
the first game, Steffi Graf at the net. Yana Novotna has not approached yet. Look at her, she's laughing. Of course, it took her three volleys to put the ball away, including that very shaky overhead. That one actually was a strong volley. That's the one she should have put away. Novotna with a great get. And Steffi into the open court. Net again. Two ventures to the net and two successes. She holds serve to begin. We mentioned this is the 31st meeting between these two players in their history, and it, they uh, met 11 times in Grand Slam events. Steffi won that one, and certainly the most memorable one, and a, and a painful memorable one for that young woman. Yana Novotna was in 1993 when she uh, blew the lead in the third set at Wimbledon and took Jan a long time to get over that. Oh, no question about it. It was interesting. About a month ago, she was talking about it, and somebody asked her, was it more valuable to her the final against Martina Hingis last year or that final against Steffi Graf? That was before this year's Wimbledon. She said, oh, 1993, definitely. She said, not because of the way I played the whole tournament when I beat Martina Navratilova on the first time at center court. She said, but just the first time you get to the Wimbledon final, it's so special. She said in that wonderful match against Steffi, and as she put it, the wonderful closing ceremony. Yana Novotna will serve for the first time in game two, trailing Love One in the Pilot Pen International Finals. Novotna looking for her 24th career title and her fifth of 1998. Prior to reaching the finals today, Steffi Grafs had reached three semifinals. Those were her best previous finishes in 98. Graf losing to Lindsay Davenport in the semifinals at Indian Wells and again at Stanford University, losing the semifinals in Birmingham, England to Natalie Tozia. Yana's only beaten Steffi four times in their 30 matches, but she's a vastly different player than the one who played Steffi almost two years ago. Their last meeting at the 96 Chase Championship, Steffi won that. The one before that, Yana won, but Steffi won 14 straight before that. Well, and Yana won when Steffi had to pull out after the first set. That was the start, or the middle of her knee problems. Sixth meeting on a hard court surface. Graf has won four of the first five on this surface. Well, that was Novotna's first foray to the net. And again, last night against Alard de Cougy, could count on one hand the number of times she approached. This trip to the net, not as successful for Yana. Well, she should respect Groff's forehand. When you're going to approach, you want to get to that backhand because Groff, with that slice, is going to give you a little bit of room to volley. Another look. Good call. 
correct call. Players entitled to 25 seconds between points to regroup. a break point for Graf, her first. She's 0 for 3 at the net. Meanwhile, Steffi's 2 for 0. saying how much joy there was for Steffi to be out here. You know what, when Yana was giving a wry smile, she's pretty excited to look across the net and see this old nemesis back in the final against her. Yana's kind of sick of playing these uh, 16, 17 year olds. <laughs> you better get used to it. Point number two for Graf. And you see, you saw a real f fist pump there for Graf. The significance of this final is not lost on her. Oh. You know, for all those hundred and three titles that Steffi Graf has amassed over her career, I bet you. Maybe she remembers 15 of them as significant. And I bet you would put this in the top 20, particularly if she wins. So which six of those 21 Grand Slam titles do you think she considers insignificant? <laughs> Plenty of them. She has, some of them she has no memory of. You know, it's interesting. This is the 10th anniversary of Groff's Grand Slam, her Golden Slam, because she added it with the Olympic gold. And she was so nonchalant about it that even when she won the US Open to cap the slam, she sort of took all the accolades, got on a plane, and went home to get ready for the Olympics. Just to put things into perspective, Cindy, Steffi Graf turned professional on October 18th, 1982. And Anna Kornikova, talking about one of those 17-year-olds, at the time was 17 months old. And when Anna was five years old, Steffi was winning eight titles on the WTA Tour. before she took off. Well, you couldn't see Steffi had the whole court in which to go. Just 
interesting dynamics so far as they've played 12 minutes and only completed two games. Simply the fact that Novotna is trying to wear down Groff from the back of the court. She has a lot of respect for Groff's passing shots. Triple break point now for Novotna. Her first break point of the match. Break point number two. and gets the game to Deuce. And this is just a wonderful exchange between the two most fluid players, among the most fluid players in the history of the sport, I would say. The grace and athleticism that you see in you, just those three points were wonderfully indicative of it. It's such a pleasure to watch the two of them. It's not reckless beating of the ball. Every point is well thought out, well constructed. Ace of the match for Graf. 93 miles per hour. So Graf fights off three break points, holds serve, and slaps the thigh. Cindy, if Steffi Groff wins today, what do you suppose her mindset will be as she enters the U.S. Open next week? Unbelievable. I mean, to, to go from a position where she hadn't beaten for anybody ranked within the top 15 in the world coming into this week to beat number 12, number 2, and number 3 in succession would su do such leapfrogging for her confidence and put her in the position to say, you know what? I can, I can get there. I can do this. And it'll be the first time all year that she's felt that way. And in the minds of the other top competitors, Hingis, Williams, Novotna, Davenport, how do you think they will view Steffi and her chances of winning it? I don't think any differently than they viewed her all year. I mean, everybody knows that Steffi has had the potential to come back to the very top of the game. It was Steffi who didn't believe it. They all, they all had complete confidence in her. It's been amazing to me that she has so lagged in her confidence. But I guess, as you say, when, when you're 29 years old, and you realize your time is limited, it, everything is so much more precious to her now than it ever was time. 5, 10, 15 years ago. Steffi Graf, after fighting off three break points and holding serve with a 2-1 lead in the opening set, we are on serve. Final round of the 1998 Pilot Pen International. So that won't help her much. <laughs> now 
now she knows she's got to get aggressive. Serve and volley, two consecutive points, loses them both. She'll stay back here. Great hands. That's better drop this time, went right at her. <laughs> There's that element of surprise if you go right at somebody's navel. You saw how Nirvana had to get out of the way. Watch her right here. Almost a defense mechanism right there. Stick the racket up, punch it away. Second ace of the match for Novotna. Oh. Oh. And the first double fall. Watch the way that's that same backhand volley that Novotna had to hit before. This time it didn't angle off the court. Groff with room to put it away. Third break point of the match for Steffi. Set up a break. Thirty-first meeting between these two. Graf has really had her way with Nevada over the years, leading at twenty-six and four. Haven't met since the Chase Championships at the end of the ninety-six season. Graf won that one, and Steffi once defeated Nevada fourteen consecutive times. She's beaten her in ten of their eleven Grand Slam matches, four of their five hard court surface matches. Australian Open in the quarterfinals. It was 8 6 in the third. her game. I was shocked that she wasn't doing it last night against Alard de Cougy. And Steffi knows that. Steffi expected it. She's just going to have to be a little bit more precise on those volleys as she was there with that stab. See, she wants to put as much pressure as she can on those ground strokes of drop. Say to her, Go ahead, you pass me, you see if you can keep doing it for two sets, maybe even three sets. Five opening set. Groff serving up 3 1, up a break. Finals of the Pilot Pen International.
you know, you were talking all about the teenagers and their staying power. One of the reasons Yana Novotna said that she's still hungry at 29 is because she didn't start taking the sport seriously until she was 21. She didn't turn pro till she was 19. That old age 19. years old when she won her first Corel WTA Tour title, Brisbane in 1988. Steffi's first serve percentage, 80. net and a break point for Nevada. She's 0 for 3 in breaks today. So Nevada breaks right back. And she'll have an opportunity to hold and even the set. Bob, Cindy, when the new, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I spotted in the sand stands Marianne de Schwart, who is Jana Novotna's doubles partner this week. They're in uh, triple duty because if Jana wins this singles match, she's got to finish a doubles match that they suspended last night due to rain at the start of the third set, and then she'd have to play the doubles final after that. So she is uh, she is very busy, and should they win this tournament, Yana would ascend to number one in the world in doubles. She put an awful lot of pressure on Desvart by saying to her, we have to win this tournament. It's only the second time they've ever played together. And depending upon what happens here and at the U.S. Open, Yana Novotna has a chance to become number one in the world in singles and doubles. What a ascendancy that would be. She wondered whether she'd ever win a Grand Slam. Imagine to be number one in the world. Yana Novotna breaking serve in game number five after she in turn was broken in game four. Tom. And she will now serve at 2-3 opening set. A chance to even the set. It is back on serve. Bob Picozzi along with Cindy Schmerler. Glad you could join us for our continuing coverage of the WTA Tour. This is the finals of the Pilot Pen International. The 31st meeting between Steffi Graf and Jana Novotna. box for Yana Novotna. Hanna Malakova is not there. Her longtime coach has taken a break since Wimbledon. She's at home in Boca Raton and she will appear next week at the U.S. Open. Well done. Top spin won by Graf. Novotna, though, has friends all over the world. In fact, I look down there, I see her good friend Dottie Covell from Rye, New York. That's because Yana is one of the few players, as you look at this replay, that perfect topspin lob by Groff. Novotna is really from the old school. She's about the only player who still sometimes houses in cities that she plays in. What I mean by that is when the tour first began, the players couldn't afford to stay in hotels, so they would find locals in each of the cities to put them up for the week. Well, Novotna and Betty Stova, Yana, uh, Hanna Matlakova, have all continued that tradition, and Yana's made great friends throughout the world. Novotny now 
now seven of 14 at the net. Well, this is Nevada's game because she wants to get give Groff the element of surprise. So that's the sneak attack right there. Novotna's first serve percentage 58 so far in the match. for Graf. She's one of three on breaks. And a big unforced error because Nevada had the whole court open. Look at the way she had her racket face completely opened up when she hit that. Never whipped it around. So we saw three straight games where service was held and now three straight service breaks. So should Graf hold? Here and again in game number nine, she would win the first set. She's up a break. Well, those were, that was a, a bad loss for Novotna right there. Two crummy unforced errors, for want of a better word, because she really had her eye on that ball and took it right off as she went to hit it. Bad enough having those good unforced errors, but the crummy ones really well, get you. No, there is such a thing as a good unforced error. You take a chance, you go for a risky shot. Those ones were putaways. Teach you to make fun of me. Why stop now? <laughs> oh! Tails Neither player has dropped a set this week. Although each has been tested in some sets. Nevada with a tie break in the quarterfinal with Marismo. Graf with that epic tie break in the second set with Davenport last night in the semis. That was a terrific match. Set it up with the serve, but the most important shot is this next one right here because Nevada is completely behind her, takes one step back and hugs the ball from behind. She looks like she knows what she's doing when she gets to the net, doesn't she? She always has, she just ain't been afraid to show it. Steffi up 5-2. Nevada will need to hold to stay in the set. It has now been 14 months and decent Steffi Graf underwent knee surgery. And as recently as two weeks ago, three weeks ago, she was very concerned about how the knee would hold up and about whether or not she wanted to continue her career. How do you think she's feeling right now about the knee? Oh, she's feeling, she came in here at the beginning of the week and said, I feel physically 100%. It's just, again, it's, a, it's mentally, it's emotionally. Last night when she won that match, there were tears in her eyes. There's been so much hop in her step all week. Throughout the summer, intermittently, she's been in a terrible mood. This week, finally, she seems to be cracking a smile, joking, laughing. The exact date of that surgery was June 10th, 97, to repair a Patellar tendon, it kept her out for the remainder of 1997. After breaking serve and then holding, Steffi Graf now up 5 2 in the opening set. Tom. Yana Novotna will now need to hold to stay in the first set. She is down a service break. Finals of the 1998 Pilot Pen International. From the Connecticut Tennis Center in New Haven, Connecticut, the home of Yale University. The stadium is on the magnificent campus of Yale, right across the street from the historic Yale Bowl. Oh! 
Sixteen. Look at the footwork from Grop. Their co feet are constantly moving, never stopping. of their careers, and yet there is so much on the line for both of these. Groff, regardless of what happens, will move back into the top 30 in the world, either to 28 or 29. Imagine thinking that she, to my mind right now, is top five, the way she's playing. The U.S. Open Committee recognized that, and despite her ranking, has seated her number eight at the U.S. Open. She's in a very difficult portion of the draw, along with Hingis Sellis. So Navanna holds serve, and now Groff will serve for the set up 5-3, up a service break. This is Steffi's ninth tournament of the year. First time she's reached the final, she's had three semifinal finishes, two quarterfinal finishes. Went out in the round of 16 twice and the round of 32 once. against Davenport. Of course, those were nerves she didn't show until she was serving for the set the first of two times. For the match, you mean? Serving for the match, right. As in eight times that she's approached. She sure wasn't there eight times last night. She was forced to hand foul not once but twice. Well, that shot worked before the one from behind. It's not going to work every time. It's a very high percentage shot. But she's trying to guard against the lob from Novotna. Well, again, 
again, it's easy to want to come into the net, but you've got to do it successfully. That's yet another example for not closing off the net. Just one of five on break points. Well, this is just bad luck for Novotna. She had the right idea, the approach. Just grabbed by the net. Set there. Novotna will have a chance to even the set. You both please. Now please, five games to four. Entering the U.S. Open, Martina Hingis will be ranked number one, but we will see a flip flop come Monday when the latest rankings come out. And Yana Novotna will replace Lindsay Davenport as number two. Everybody else will pretty much stay the same. Arancha Sanchez Vicario, Venus Williams. Monica Sellis, Conchita. Yet Davenport and Novotna still very close to that ascendancy to number one. It's a three-way race. Hingis obviously defending the most points at the U.S. Open, 720. Novotna defending the least because she only reached the quarterfinals last year. Davenport into the semis. So if Hingis loses early at the U.S. Open, first or second, maybe even third round, and either Hingis, I mean, either Davenport or Novotna wins it, either one could be ranked number one in the world. Other changes we will see. Anka Uber, by Tom. reaching the quarterfinals here, will move into the number 19 spot. Steffi Groff will be 27th if she wins today and 28th if she is the runner-up here. Currently ranked number 38. So Yana Novotna after breaking serve for the second time. Still needs to hold here in order to stay in the set. We're back on serve. Game number 10. Here. 
Double fault number two for Novaka and three set points for Steffi Graf. of Groff is impressive, but Novotna handed her that game. No question about it. Three unforced errors. As you look at the overflowing stands here at the Connecticut Tennis Center. In fact, the other night they had tremendous, the highest walk-up attendance that they'd ever had. Higher than the men last week on the day that Sampras, Rofter, and Corda were playing. And losing. And losing, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All three of them going down with a span of about four hours. One, two, and three seeds in the men's pilot pen, which has played the week prior to the women's. Seven of Steffi's Grand Slam titles have come at Wimbledon. Five at the U.S. Open, five at Roland Garros, and four at the Australian. She's also won the Chase Season Ending Championship five times. By virtue of Steffi's win over Davenport last night, she has already exceeded her match victory total of a year ago when she missed more than half the season with the knee injury only had 16 wins in 19 matches in 1997. It's been a while since Nevada's won a point. Groff leads one love in the second set. Yana Novotna, I've, I've said it before that I think she's a very engaging, funny young woman. She said recently that people think that I'm working so hard, I'm never smiling. She said, in fact, people get the impression I'm not very serious, uh, that I'm very serious, but I'm not. I'm a lot of fun to be around. People who know me tell me, come on, Yana, smile on the court. Do something funny. And that first set, Groff with an almost 80% first serve. Very strong for her, she needs that. That's the key to that first set. Was able to pull it out when she needed to. Steffi Graf holds serve to begin the second set. Tom. She won the opening set 6-4. Finals of the 1998 Pilot Penn International from the Connecticut Tennis Center in New Haven, Connecticut. Very hot and humid day here in Connecticut. Had a little bit of rain late last night. It suspended play Thank in you. the Ready, third set of a double semifinal, the third and last match of the night. We'll resume that after the singles final today. <laughs> Steffi broke Novotna's serve at Love to end the first set, then held serve at Love to begin the second set. So she's won the last nine points. Okay. Uh, at the start of this match, I, 
I turned to you and I said, Groff and straight sets. And I, I still believe that because I think Novotna is very frustrated. She wants this over with. I also think for all of those years and all of those losses to the woman on the other side of the net, it still plays around in Novotna's head, even though she knows that this season she's been a much better player. And Novotna finally breaks Groff's string of 10 consecutive points. Seven of eleven at the point at the net, rather. And a couple of break points to win her third straight game. And that was a case of Nirvana getting caught at no, no man's land. The minute you get forced to half volley, you're compromising your position. So Groff breaks serve for the second consecutive time and the fourth time in the match. So she is now up a service break. Up two love, second set, won the first set, 6 4. Well, Novotna will go here, head down the Merritt Parkway onto the Hutchinson River, head straight to Flushing Meadows to get ready for her first round match at the Open against the wild card Jennifer Capriotti. A little bit of controversy there, Bob, because when Capriotti returned to the Corel WTA Tour, after her time off, having spent some time in a drug rehabilitation clinic. It was when that happened, that Yana said, why is everybody welcoming her back? Herself. It wasn't as if it wasn't the same situation as with Monica Sellis, who was stabbed in the back by a, an errant fan. And she took a lot of heat, Nevada, for uh, coming out against Capriotti. Oh. Earlier this year, Nevada was asked about it, and she said, I don't regret saying it at all. If something bothers me or I strongly disagree, I'll go out and say it. Everybody acted so stunned and surprised, but behind closed doors, they all agreed with me. Capriotti attempted to qualify here in New Haven this week. Unsuccessfully. She lost in the second round of qualifying to Virginia Ruano Pasqual. Then Ruano Pasqual had to go out and to default with an injury. She was scheduled to beat Lindsay Davenport in the second round and injured a hamstring and practiced the day of the match. Three love Groff in the second. This is the first time that the Pilot Pen Women's International has been held. It was formerly known as the U.S. Hardcore Championship, an event which dates all the way back to 1948 and has been held 31 times over a 51-year period at 11 different sites. By the way, in the background over Steffi Groff's left shoulder there to the right of your screen is Jennifer Rosati. She's a professional basketball player for the New England Blizzard of the American Basketball League although Jennifer's contract has expired she has not yet re-signed with the ABL amidst considerable speculation that she may join the WNBA. Someone asked Jennifer this week Jennifer participated in a women in sports ceremony here earlier in the week and someone asked Jennifer how she thinks she would fare against some of the pros and her response was I don't let anyone see me play tennis I really haven't played seriously since the sixth grade but terrific athlete. Tom. Steffi Graf up a service break leading three loves second set with Yana Novotna. Graf won the first set 6-4. Bob Picozzi along with Cindy Schmerler 
We come your way from the Connecticut Tennis Center in New Haven, Connecticut. Martin is having a conversation with Alicera Ulrich in the chair. She has only won one point in the second set. Bathroom break. Yep. Players are entitled at any time during a match to take a bathroom break. Donna's actually sort of lumbering off the court. She looks like she's, uh, she's been, it's very humid. Rock's gonna take the opportunity, most likely to change her shirt. Bob, if uh, Steffi Groff beats both Yana Nirvana and Lindsay Davenport in succession at this event, it will leave only one top player that she really wants to go after, and that is Martina Hingis. Hingis, earlier this year, said of Groff, Steffi, she's had some good results in the past, but it's a faster, more athletic game now than when she played. She's old now. Her time has passed. Imagine the reaction of Groff to that kind of comment. The winner of this one will take home $79,000. Runner-up settles for $36,000. The total purse, $450,000. You wonder what goes through someone's mind when they say something like that publicly. Now, maybe that's how Martina feels about Steffi. But why in the world would you say that publicly about one of the, one of the greatest, if not the greatest player, to ever play this sport? Because you're 17 years old, you're number one in the world, Everybody's telling you how wonderful you are. And the one thing about Martina Hingis is when she says something, she says it differently than Venus Williams does. Venus Williams says it with sort of an angry bravado. Martina Hingis says it with this little charming smile. She endears herself. It's rare that people get really angry at Martina Hingis. Groff wasn't angry when she said it. There was sort of this zing in her eye. She just said, I try not to think about it, but I hear it. She knows. And boy, if, if Groff and Hingis are on opposite sides of the net at Flushing Meadows, you will see fire in Groff's eyes. And considering that Hingis has played subpar tennis since May, it would be a very interesting encounter. Well, you know, Sefi Groff has won 17, and so has Chris Everett. And I don't ever remember them saying anything. I mean, can you imagine Chris Everett at age 17 saying something like that about, say, Billie Jean King? Or, no, no, and she wouldn't. It's not their personality. But the young kids now, they say what they think, they say what they feel. Uh, Yana Novotna says, Venus Williams says, it's an American thing, the way they build up these champions before they've proven themselves. Martina Hingis at least has the, the quality of play to back it up. Hingis and Groff in the same half of the draw, so if they were to meet, it would be in the semifinals. Also, Novotna in Groff's quarter at Monica Sellis in Hingis's quarter. Here's a look at Heinz Guntard, longtime coach. Just missed that if you had to look quickly. Guntard has been standing behind Steffi Groff for a very long time. Mom Heidi Groff is here. Joni, the phys physiotherapist for Groff. See, Groff did change her shirt. So did Novotna. It's very sticky out here. That's why I say these are ideal conditions to mirror the U.S. Open. Time. So as we resume, Novotna will be serving down a set and down a break in set number two. It is three love Groff. She won the first set 6-4. This is Novotna's 14th appearance of the year. She's won four titles, two runner-up finishes. So three semifinal finishes, two quarterfinal finishes, went out in the round of 16 once and the round of 32 once this year. Well, I mentioned that Novotna is playing Jennifer Capriati in the first round of the Open. Groff has the talented young American Corina Moraru. Moraru named the U.S. Fed Cup team. 
played and lost to Spain. She didn't see any action in that tie. And also lingering down there is the talented Croat, Mariana Lucic. So Novotna breaks Graf's string of winning four straight games, and she holds. So now Graf will serve up 3-1 in the second. Besides Steffi's three semifinal finishes this year, she was a quarterfinal finisher at Hanover, losing to Sabine Appleman, and at Eastbourne, losing to Anna Kornikova. First double fall of the match for Graf. There's Heidi Graf, Stephanie's mom. Joni, the trainer. Heinz Guntard. a point away from a 4-1 lead here in the second. Second set. Some of the previous sites of the U.S. Hardcore Championships, there have been a lot of them. This is the 11th different location for this tournament. It's the first year under the sponsorship of Pilot Penn. The tournament's been held in San Francisco, Berkeley, California, Salt Lake City, Utah, Seattle, Washington, La Jolla, California, Sacramento, California, Denver, Colorado, San Antonio, Texas, Stratton Mountain, Vermont, and most recently, Stone Mountain, Georgia, where last year Lindsey Davenport won the title. Steffi Groff is the only three-time winner of this event. Conchita Martinez won it twice. And among the other winners, Monica Sellis, Martina Navratilova, and the great Billie Jean King. Steffi Graf, after holding serve, remains up a service break in the second set, leading 4-1 over Yana Novotna. Graf Tom. won the opening set 6-4. Graf looking for her first WTA Tour title in 15 months and the 104th of her legendary career. Oh. 
being played next week at the U.S. Open. And you can see etched across her face, a little bit of concern. <laughs> the truth is, though, she hasn't played a bad match. It's just that Groff keeps pressing her. Groff's had very few unforced errors. In fact, just 11 for the match against 18 for Novotna. More importantly, she's had 15 winners. Make it 22 when you add in the net. And now a couple of break points for Graf. She is four of six in these situations today. So Groff breaks serve again, and now will serve for the match. Up two service breaks here in the second set. Her fifth break of the match. Well, this is when she panicked yesterday against Davenport. She's left herself plenty of room, but I don't see as much tension in her face as I did yesterday. Okay, that's right. <laughs> Big service winner to begin game number seven. Those were two perfect serves set Groff up. And yet another serve, and none of them has come anywhere near the 100 mile per hour mark. They're just so well placed. Three match points for Steffi Groff. Fastest serve of the match for Groff, 105 miles per hour. Just missed. Welcome back to the winner's circle, Steffi Groff. Was it more jubilation or relief? She looked for lessons and oh, jubilation. Well, imagine the jubilation she feels right now with her first tournament title and beating the numbers two and three ranked players in the world en route. In a way, it was almost too easy, Bob. 6 4, 6 1, and she was never really challenged. 67 minutes. The 104th singles title of her magnificent career. And because of the injury to her knee, the first in 15 months. Steffi wins it 
Bob Picozzi and Cindy Schmerler back at the Connecticut Tennis Center in New Haven. This the match summary. Groff, first serve percentage 75, 26 winners to 14 for Novotna. And Cindy converting five of seven break opportunities. Well, what I was most impressed at was the fact that Steffi Groff was at the net as much as she was. Eight of 14, and I actually think it was nine of 15. I think one wasn't counted on the official stat that was an overhead in that first game. She came to the net twice in her first service game. So you see the officials lining up. Yana Nabotna is off to the corner of the court, chatting with her friends. Last time Steffi was a winner was in Strasbourg on May 24th, 1997. 15 months and five days later, she's back. Well, and that was fairly remarkable, too, because her knee was in such bad shape. She went straight from Stra Strasbourg to the French Open, lost to Kutzer, and left the tour to have that knee surgery. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the MC for our award ceremonies. Officials from the tournament lining up on the court as they get ready for the post-match ceremony. Groff will move up to number 27 in the new Corel WTA Tour rankings when they come out Monday. Rankings mean very little to Stephanie Groff <laughs> right. at this point. Can you name 26 players in the world who are better? <laughs> I can't name two players in the world who are better. Right now, the way she played the last two days. Thank you, Michelle. We're keeping the crowd here. We're waiting here. I'll be great now for a great night. The awards ceremony beginning, hosted by Patrick Rafter. Of I'm sorry to correct CBS you. CBS Sports. Patrick McEnroe. Patrick McEnroe, excuse me. Excuse me. Patrick Rafter is playing on Long Island. Semifinals, semifinals today in the Hamlet Cup. Patrick McEnroe's hair is shorter. Ron, first, please. Steffi's so anxious to get up there that she bolted out of her chair. Patrick had to say to her, uh, excuse me, Yana first, please. Powering, played unbelievable tennis, was moving well. So uh, all I can say for me, it was a good preparation before the Open. Now I need to get some rest and then start over again on Monday. Okay, Yana, thanks. Good luck and good luck next week in the U.S. Open. Steffi? I think they appreciate you here in New Haven. Steffi, how's it feel to be back in the winner's circle after a long... 15 months since you've held the trophy. Awesome. <laughs> that sums it up. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously, uh, it's been a long way, but, um, you know, it's a pleasure to be here right now, to be at this point. I mean, it, it's been uh, worth doing what I've done. Well, Steffi, it's a tremendous match. You seemed to gain confidence as the match went on. Uh, you served in exceptionally well throughout the match, and you moved so well, and your forehand obviously was there again. 
Yeah, I mean, I've um, you know worked real hard uh, on on getting physically in a good shape, and it seemed uh, to be paying off. Especially this week, I felt I was moving much better. And uh, yeah, like you said, I, I I felt my serve was going for me. I didn't really make a lot of mistakes, and I felt uh, I was controlling the points. Now, rumor has it that you wanted to be in Florida, just preparing for the U.S. Open. But your coach over there, Heinz Gunter, said, "No, no, you have to come to New Haven, get some matches. I guess that worked out all right, huh?" Yeah. <laughs> wanted to take the week off after losing him in the Morier Open. Heinz said, that's not what's happening. You're going. Steffi, who usually fights yeah, back, said, I It's true. I didn't do too well in Montreal the week before. And uh, I felt that maybe I needed a few days off. And um, Heinz didn't think so. And he was <laughs> very right. <laughs> well, Steffi, congratulations. Well done. And good luck uh, going into the U.S. Open in New York. It's here for... 1998 Pilot Pen Women's Champion. Right so now, I'd like Steffi to introduce Graf, the, the 1998 and CEO of Pilot, Pilot Pen, America, Pen International Champion Award to the runner-up, Mr. Ron Shaw. The president and CEO of Pilot Pen, Ron Shaw, will now hand over the goods. We need you here. You have showed what tennis is all about this week. Your sportsmanship on the court has been remarkable. Uh, you've made us very proud. You know, it's the first time we've sponsored a ladies' tennis event. Uh, play and people like you make it very easy for us to decide. We'd like to do this for a long time. Congratulations on being the runner-up. Ron and Novotna, everybody. And now to present the championship trophy, Joy Rodenberg, the Vice President of the United States Tennis Association. Thank you, Patrick. On behalf of the half million members of the United States Tennis Association, it is my pleasure to present the perpetual trophy of the USDA Women's Hard Courts to this year's champion, Steffi Graf. Steffi, good luck at the Open. Ladies and gentlemen, your 1998. Along with that, Pilot Steffi will take home champion, first place check of $79,000. Cindy Steffi has 21 Grand Slam titles. There's her mom, Heidi Graf. Do you think she could possibly win number 22 in the next two weeks? If she plays the way she did the last two days, absolutely. If she can hold her nerves and keep that forehand going, she will give Martina Hingis and everybody else at the U.S. Open a real run. Okay, Cindy, thank you very much. So Steffi Graf wins her 104th. Corel WTA Tour singles title, a 6-4, 6-1 straight set winner over Yana Nevada. She is the 1998 Pilot Pen International Champion. For Cindy Schmerler, I'm Bob Picosi. Thanks so much for joining us, and so long from New Haven, Connecticut.